Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla. Tesla is about to leapfrog the whole industry once again. If you think legacy automakers are catching up, you are truly looking at the wrong things that are going on right now because a new race has started that will set Tesla apart from pretty much everyone else. And it will happen so fast that the legacy automakers will have no chance of keeping up. If you think Tesla has a competitive advantage today, it will be nothing compared to where they will be in two to three years. This race for the legacy automakers are already over. So let's check it all out and let's dive right in. Tesla has been innovating in manufacturing for many years. First, Tesla didn't know how to build the vehicle altogether and used the old ways of doing things in manufacturing. But they did start with something the others didn't have, and that was software. Tesla built a whole new operating system that could control every aspect of the car, which was unheard of in the industry. Like Jim Farley told us last year, Ford uses 150 different software suppliers to control everything in the car. And this was not a problem back in the old days, when you just built a car and sold it to customers and that was it. You did not need these 150 software suppliers to talk to each other, because automakers did not come with an update to their cars down the road. But suddenly, Tesla showed that there was a different way of doing it. You should be able to buy a car and then just like the smartphone, get new features down the road. But as Jim Farley has explained, that is basically impossible for them to do. As of now, with 150 different software suppliers, they need to build their own operating system to compete on this part. And Ford has never written a single line of code. So that is why we are here more than a decade after Tesla introduced the smart car that could do over-the-air updates. Ford is still not able to do it. But this is of course just talking about the car, but that is not even what this video is about. But we need to understand that Tesla from the beginning has been a software company, and that is what has led Tesla to be able to do everything so different. And not just in the car, but also in the manufacturing as well. Because the car might look like any other car on the outside, and in the beginning even looked a little bit worse on the outside side when it came to the fit and finish, as Sandy Monroe said when he first saw the Model 3, he couldn't understand why anyone would put a car on the road that was this badly assembled. But then he tear it down, and what was underneath the skin was what blew Sandy's mind away. Especially when four months later Tesla has made 14 different chains to the Octovalve. As Sandy said, no one else moved this fast no one. And how is Tesla even able to make all these changes so fast and all the time? Because this would be an absolutely nightmare for traditional automakers and make the cost of producing the car skyrocket and the dealers would not be able to know what kind of car they had in front of them. They would need almost a whole new instruction manual with every new vehicle that came along from the assembly line. Well. Because Tesla is a software company, they made a whole new way of doing this as well. They made a digital twin of every single car that comes off the production line. So you just look up the digital twin. If you need to fix the car, you can see how this car is made down to the glue that is used. And Tesla doesn't have a huge warehouse filled with thousands of different parts for every different vehicle. If they need to fix a part that Tesla do not use any longer, they just put in a new version of that part into the car, so they don't have to store all these different parts they use. And Tesla has also made a partnership with the supplier much closer than any other OEM. They have also made the partnership agreement just one single page in easy to understand English, so everyone in the company can make a change to the car 
or the production line can also make a change to the contract with the suppliers and get a new one signed within hours. And thanks to Tesla's AI running the factory, they have automated their ability to check if the change they want to make to the car makes it more efficient or the production line any faster. And if it does, everyone has the authority to make the change. So thanks to Tesla's software skills, they have made it almost free for them to make a change to a car every single day if they need to. And that is why their pace of innovation is so much faster than what the others can do. Outline Daily just had a talk with a teardown expert, not Sandy Monroe, but basically the same kind of expert. And he has explored the Tesla vehicles and that Tesla can implement changes faster than the old guys can probably even agree on they need to make a change. But one of the main reasons why the old guys have hardly moved in the last decade when it comes to manufacturing, even though we have seen Tesla revolutionize the way we build a car, is because of this. When we approach the Chinese, they are like, what do I need to do this and what are the benefits? You approach the other kind of other OEMs, a lot of the other legacy OEMs in other countries, they're like, they'll give you reasons why it cannot be done. Yes, the Chinese are eager to learn everything they can, and that is why we have already seen companies in China using gigacastings. But the old guys are just busy telling the teardown experts why it can't be done. Just like they were busy telling us all why there was no benefits in gigacastings, and now even Toyota is copying Tesla's gigacastings. I think the most telling sentence was, and he said this was something played around before, and then we shelved it because it was too much of a change. It was too much change, so they shelved it. So the old OEM doesn't want a big change, but just want to make incremental change down the road. And that is why this will hurt so much, because huge change are coming. That will disrupt the industry even more. But the old guys are not even willing to make these kinds of change, even if they could. So they would rather go bankrupt. And the guy here in the outline video and his expert has also tried to go through the new unbox method Tesla is working on and think that Tesla will at least save about 11 billion dollars trying to get to 20 million cars produced with the new production method. So even if Toyota get to copy Tesla's old way of doing things with the geek casting and structural battery pack and so on, they will still not be price competitive with Tesla as they are making a whole new way of producing a car that the world has never seen before that will cut Tesla's cost in half and the others have not even caught up with Tesla's old way of doing things. So let's just say that Toyota will be able to get the price of producing an EV down to the level that Tesla has today by copying Tesla's production method. But Toyota has said it will not be ready for the market before 2026, 2027. But at that time, Tesla will have a production method that cost half as much to produce an EV. So Toyota will have no chance of being competitive on price as Tesla can make their cars for half the price. And Elon did say that Tesla's new production line will be the most advanced production line in the world, far up and beyond what anyone else has. And I personally think this is because Tesla is incorporating the Tesla Optimus robot into the production line. As some of the tasks in the production line will be very simple things to do, something they can easily teach a Tesla robot to do because Tesla has designed the whole vehicle with automation and production in mind. So the $11 billion in savings does not include the savings Tesla would do by incorporating the humanoid robots into the production line. I think the next race will not just be another race for the old guys to try to copy Tesla's unbox method, it will also be a race getting humanoid robots into the production line. And that is probably why we see someone like BMW trying to get into this game by partnering up with Figure to get humanoid robots into their factories. Because to suddenly have a humanoid robot 
taking a place for a human, working a job like putting wheels for the cars on a conveyor belt. That will suddenly save someone like Tesla, let's say $50,000 a year in salary, every single year going forward, not just one time, and might be able to build that robot for like $10,000 in cost, as every component is made by Tesla in-house, and Tesla will no doubt take this to a very high volume of production, getting an insane economy of scale on the robots. So imagine being the competition that has to pay their workers a $50,000 a year, but Tesla only pays $10,000 once in cost of building the robot, and that's it. The competitive edge for a company that has a humanoid robot working compared to the ones that doesn't will be so huge they will simply not be able to compete, as their production will be so expensive compared to what someone like Tesla might end up with here. So let's just take Toyota as an example, as they have been out saying that their next EV will be built basically as Tesla built their cars today. But Tesla will cut that in half. So Toyota might be able to build an EV for thirty or $35,000 in cost, but Tesla will be able to build an EV for as little as probably $18,000. So Tesla will be able to sell the next generation Tesla for $25,000, but with a great cross margin of at least 20%. But that is $10,000 less than what Toyota is even able to build the car for. So it will be impossible for someone like Toyota to compete with Tesla. And if Tesla even puts humanoid robots into the mix, that will make this a battle Toyota has no chance to ever survive. Why would anyone buy an EV from Toyota for maybe $40,000 when they can get a Tesla for $25,000? And Toyota doesn't really have a chance to get down to the Tesla price point, especially not with the function and features that that we will get with the next generation vehicle because it will still be a Tesla with Tesla safety and Tesla software and technology. So even if someone like Volkswagen will come out with their promised $25,000 EV, the ID2, it will be very inferior to what you will get with Tesla. As the only thing Volkswagen has announced about the way they will try to get the price down is through economy of scale. But right now they're scaling back EV production, so they are actually working against that goal. So for Volkswagen to get the price that low on the same platform they basically have today, but only relying on economy of scale to get prices down, it will no doubt be a very stripped down version of a Volkswagen EV they will produce to get the cost low. They are not getting cost down through innovation or making a step change in production the way Tesla does, but by cheapening their products. So just as we have seen today, we have a scenario where Volkswagen EVs is uncompetitive for an uncompetitive price, as Volkswagen themselves have said. That will be even worse in only a couple of years when Tesla introduced the unboxed production method, maybe even with a humanoid robot working some part of the production line. So yes, I do think Tesla will be able to get to 20 million EVs, as no one else will be able to compete with what Tesla will be able to offer and produce. Remember, today, none of the others can really, truly make an over-the-air update to change something with the car. And to think they have had over 10 years to figure this out since Tesla introduced this, and no one can still not do a truly over-the-air update other than some of the Chinese. It is really hard to see how someone like Toyota should be able to be competitive when what they are working on right now will be out and about two to three years will cost maybe twice as much to build as what Tesla will come out with in two to three years. So the old legacy automakers not only have to become a software company, which they are still struggling with, but also have to leapfrog their own production lines, making huge changes, which they don't really want to do. And only just now, some of them are starting to use Giga Casting and trying to copy Tesla's old way of doing things. But they kind of have to leapfrog all of that and go straight to Tesla's unbox production method if they want to be able to compete. And on top of that, they also have to learn how to become a robotics company. 
Because even though BMW is partnering up with Figure to get robots at their factory, it will always be cheaper for Tesla to build a robot as they do it in-house themselves, whereas BMW buys them from a third-party supplier because they don't know how to do this themselves. And at the same time, their profitable ice business is going away, and all their so-called assets in their ice industry will become basically worthless. So the task the old legacy automakers are standing in front of, it just seems too big of a mountain to climb too fast. The war will basically be all over within the time it normally takes the old guys to do a production development cycle. So time is up. There is no more time. They might have one production development cycle left if they're lucky, but that is it. Can they make all of these changes and transformations and implement all of these innovations they don't even want to implement or understand today within just one production development cycle? I highly doubt it. But miracles have been made before, but the automotive industry is not known for their speed and agility. So how they should be able to do all of this this fast just seems impossible. So in maybe three to four years, they will be sitting with a product that nobody wants because they will be inferior and more expensive than what someone like Tesla and maybe some of the Chinese will be able to offer. The race of getting to a production method which include humanoid robots has started. But I think the pace of this race will be so fast that the old, slow legacy automakers have no chance of even being in the race. All they can do is stand at the sideline and just watch as this race pass them by. It's really not because I don't want them to succeed. The more the merrier, the faster we get to 100% EVs. I just don't see how it should even be possible. They started too late. They even today have uncompetitive EVs, as Volkswagen have said themselves, and that will only get worse with the next iterations from Tesla. And because Tesla is not letting go and has cut prices in Europe again here in the beginning of this year on the Model Y, which is already Europe's best-selling car, Tesla is really holding the whole car industry hostage. They can't compete on price with their uncompetitive EVs. Just as we see Stellantis CEO was out saying he's trying to avoid a bloodbath by cutting cost. A race to the bottom will end with a bloodbath. Yes, this will end with a bloodbath, but for the legacy automakers. So 2024 will be yet another year where the others will continue to bleed while Tesla cut prices to as low as possible. And yes, that might hurt their profits short term. Oh no. But if you understand what we've just been talking about, and what is about to happen in this industry. It doesn't really matter if Tesla earns nothing over the next couple of years because they are about to start swimming in cash by the end of this decade as they will become the all dominating force in the transportation sector as the old guys has no chance of keeping up with Tesla's production. And that is exactly what Tesla said they would do. Be head and shoulders above anyone in manufacturing. That is our goal. And that is exactly what we are seeing playing out right now. As we see expert sitting talking about how Tesla is years ahead in production to anyone else. I think this is already game over. If people really think the disruption is about the car itself, they are badly mistaken. The disruption is happening through software, robots and manufacturing. And these changes are so huge and happening so fast, the old guys can't keep up. It's all over. They just don't know it yet. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice. <laughs>